Hey guys, welcome back to Supposedly Fun. I'm Greg. It is really cold where I am right now, so I'm hoping wherever you are, you're staying warm and getting through. The good news is that because it's cold, I managed to finish two books this weekend. First, The Terrible by Ursa Daly Ward, which is a memoir, and Adele by Leila Slamani, which is a newly translated novel. And it's funny when you read two books that end up feeling very paired, as if you had planned it the whole time, but you never did. The experience was kind of similar. I don't actually recommend reading them back to back like I did because uh, they're very visceral, they're kind of brutal. Uh, you will come away feeling very bleak if you pair them like I did, but I do recommend both of them. They're both about women experiencing a, sor a sort of shame spiral and struggling with um, her life and to get by. But I, I definitely recommend both of them. I want to talk to you about them. I am not going to talk about The Terrible first, even though it's the one that I read first, and I think that's because talking about Adele is going to help me work into talking about The Terrible, if that makes sense. So, let's talk about Adele. Adele is the newly translated book by Leila Slamani, which I mentioned. I did not mention that Leila Slamani wrote The Perfect Nanny, which was uh, one of the New York Times top 10 books of 2018. I reviewed it. I'll put that up here. Um, like The Perfect Nanny, Adele reads like a psychological thriller, even though it isn't, at least not strictly speaking. You can probably guess it's about a woman named Adele, you cheeky little detective you. Um, she is a journalist who lives in Paris with her husband, who is a successful surgeon, and her young son named Lucien, who is three years old, I believe. Now, Leila Slamani refuses to diagnose Adele. There's actually a reading guide at the end of the book with, like, discussion questions and an interview with the author. She refuses to diagnose Adele. She says she prefers to leave it up to the reader to decide what's going on in her life and what diagnoses she may or may not need. But it feels pretty apparent that there's sex addiction at play here because even though on the outside it would appear that Adele has the perfect life, she can't help just like dropping everything when she has a compulsion and going out to either meet someone or pick up someone and she cannot feel satisfied again until she has, let's say, scratched that itch. <laughs> it, but it does feel like she's suffering from a variety of compulsions. That is just one of them. Uh, there's definitely some sort of risk addiction at play because she flirts very closely with getting discovered. She is very self-destructive and depressed, and those lead to even more risk addiction because she keeps overdrawing her bank account, and you know at some point her husband's going to find out, but she can't stop doing it. And she's a compulsive liar, and of course the compulsive lying helps her continue along with all of the other things. Now, Leila Slamani spares no details. If you have a tender stomach, this might not be the book for you, because she goes into brutal detail a lot of the time. Um, of the two books, I will say I think Adele sticks the landing better. It has a more satisfying conclusion, but I do really recommend both of them. Um, and Leila Slamani writes with an urgency and a depth that a lot of writers are lacking, so I can't wait to get something else from her. That is Adele by Leila Slamani. Okay, unlike Adele, The Terrible is nonfiction. It is a memoir of Ursa Daly Ward's about her childhood, her teen years, and her early adulthood, a time when she lost herself in drugs, alcohol, and depression. She also dabbles in sex work, and though it's not an addiction, here it does serve as another bridge between these two books if you pair them back to back like I did. Uh, Ursa Daly Ward, also, th there are some bisexual elements in this book, which makes me feel like I can count it toward my goal of reading more lesbian, bisexual, or transgender books in 2019, so yay. <laughs> um, being a poet, Ursa Daly Ward writes with a really compelling fusion of prose and verse. It works quite well. I struggle mightily with poetry, but I found this really compelling. I was very impressed with her skill with by her skill with words. And I couldn't help but think to myself that I bet this is what James Fry was trying to do when he wrote A Million Little Pieces and Failing. That um that probably sounds mean. Um I guess it is what it is. You know what? He's a trash person, so I don't care. This is what he was trying to do. And it is funny as well because the book that I I picked up after Adele also tries to use this format and fails. So I, I can't take it seriously because I, I feel like now I've read something that does it right and you can't go back once that has happened. The format does, however, keep the reader at arm's length. And I don't know that that would have bothered me as much if I hadn't followed this book with Adele, which urges the reader along in a way that this one doesn't. 
Uh, neither book explains why its women are in the state that they're in or having the compulsions that they are having, but it only feels slight to me in The Terrible. It didn't bother me as much with Adele. And maybe that's because The Terrible has a sort of abrupt ending that left me wanting more. Again, until I picked up Adele, the ending didn't bother me. I almost feel like I need to seek out more interviews or other writings by Ursa Daily Ward to try to figure out what happens next and how she got from the woman depicted here to the woman that she is now. And, you know, that there are worse things. Again, I didn't have those problems until I picked up Adele, so if you don't pair these books together, I, I, I think this one ends up coming out a lot better. It's just funny that that little twist of fate had both of the books land in my possession from the library at the same time. They are both very powerful books written by women with a very powerful talent for writing. I do definitely recommend both, just don't do them back to back the way I did. Um, and they're great snow day reads. They read very quickly. Both of them are very short. Like I said, I read this one in a single day. I read this one in two days. So, oh, you know, I, um, that actually reminds me, I'm going to do a video this week about snow day reads. So remember these <laughs> when I get to that. And incidentally, the book that I picked up after Adele is Marcus Zusak's Bridge of Clay. And this is the one that I'm struggling with because it's trying to do the same format as the terrible, but it's really not doing well and I'm having a hard time. Uh, taking it seriously, and this is a long book. It is 534 pages, and I'm only 50 pages in, and I'm having a hard time taking it seriously, and I'm really struggling. So if you've read this book, let me know. Is it worth hanging in there for, or should this be my first DNF of 2019? So let me know, and if you've read these and you agree, let me know. If you have other recommendations based on these, let me know that as well. I will be back again, and until then, happy reading. And thank you for watching this video. If you liked what you saw, please consider subscribing or watching some of my other videos. Stay warm, everybody. I'll see you next time.